Welcome to the podcast, y'all. Let me ask you right off the bat if this sounds familiar. You sit down to write. You're in the zone. You're putting the words down. You get done. You're excited. You go to read it back, and it just sucks. It happens to everybody. And today's episode, we're going to talk about how to write better. So stick around. We'll discuss that. Every writer starts out writing shitty. It's just the nature of the beast, you know, that's how we do it. We start out, we suck, and we aim to get better. The problem with that, though, is that when you start out writing, you're excited about it, you know? You want to be this great writer. Maybe you read a book or a magazine article or a blog post and and it just turned something on in your brain that made you want to do it too. However it is that you get into writing, we all have this internal voice and that some bitch is never satisfied. Part of it's our taste, but it's all personal and when we do work we read it back and we may be excited about it, but as time goes on, you keep reading it and it just gets worse and worse. And in the beginning, early on, you know, you, you, you write something, maybe it's a poem, a little short story that you made up. You give it to mom, you pass it around the class to your best friends and everybody loves it. And then you get home you read it again because you're excited and, and it just it, it's missing something. It just basically it sucks. It, it, it's shitty writing and you're disappointed. But everybody else loves it and, and you hate it, but everybody loves it. So you, you kind of get this, okay, I can do this and you keep going. And that's the important part because you have to realize right from the beginning And I tell you, I wish people had told me this, but in the beginning, everybody's going to love your things because you're only going to show it to people that love you. And nobody wants to hurt your feelings, especially if you start young, like I did. I started second, third grade, passing stories around. But the younger you are when you start, the more time you have to get better. That's not always a great thing. But it has its benefits. But the point is, in the beginning, when you're young, you're starting out. Even if you're older and you're just starting out, people want to support you. And you're doing something as a writer that a lot of people cannot do. They're surprised. They're jealous. They're envious. And, and they're excited for you. And, and of course, they're going to think, wow, this is this is great. You just created this story out of thin air. I could never do that. You're amazing. It's amazing. Give me more. The problem is it doesn't sit well with you. On, on the personal level, it's that little internal voice. And it's your taste. And it's just... Your work is there, your words are there, but something about it is just, it's it's missing. It's not, it doesn't click. And like I told you earlier, I I started out early. I started in about second grade, writing little one or two page little stories with stick figure drawings on them for artwork. And usually I would make fun of the teacher or... We would poke fun at the weird kid that smelled like pee. And everybody would laugh, and I would laugh, and I'd put it in my notebook and go home and show my mom, and most of the time, she would laugh. And and then I would read it back again, and I'd hate it. 
and I'd crumple it up and I'd throw it away. I really didn't start writing, officially writing, until I was in high school. And you just, you keep going, you know? You, you, like I did when I was in high school, I, started, I got to the point, I was writing poetry then. And I think a lot of us start out with the prose. But I got to the point where I would write a really good poem, and I'd pass it around, and everybody loved it, and they wanted more. And I started, I got to this point where I was writing every day. I would, I would go to English class, I would go to my algebra class, and I would write a poem. And I would run out of things to write about, so I would ask the students sitting next to me on either side, what should I write about? Give me a topic. And they would say something, and I would write a poem about it. And they were just overly impressed that during the course of this 55 minute course or class that I could sit there and write this poem about a random topic they pulled out of their ass and as time went on these requests got more and more ridiculous just to see if I could do it and of course I did but every single one of them I hated and I really didn't know why at the time and nobody told me I didn't hang out with writers there weren't any writing cliques in my high school and so I just kind of did it I wrote I get home and throw them away start again the next day but you keep writing and you keep going and you keep doing and there's something inside you that pushes you to do it and that's that's the key you have to keep writing you put more and more words down more and more work is being pushed out and you're going to notice that your skill as a writer is going to increase before your taste as a reader accepts what you wrote and you're probably going to go through what I call the give up period and you're going to sit there and you're going to blame it on school you're going to blame it on work you're going to blame it on your relationships. You're going to blame it on life. Oh, shit happens and I don't have time to write. I don't have the energy to write. I'm too tired today. Work a double shift and I'm just not going to do it. Turns into three weeks of nothing. Turns into I haven't written in three or four years. Whatever it is. But you have this itch. There's this nagging feeling somewhere in the crawls of your belly that wants to put words on paper when you get this itch you may not recognize it right away or you may try to satisfy it with a couple words here and there but somewhere deep down it's telling you to get back to work we used to do this every day we haven't done it in a while let's get back to doing it every day and it's going to happen. And your, your give up period may be a couple of weeks, maybe a couple of years. It's different for everybody. Because life does get in the way. Relationships do get in the way. Jobs do get in the way. We have to live. You're not going to be a millionaire writing poetry. Still in high school. Trying to buy your first car. You're not going to sell, you're not going to buy a car selling poems. So you keep going, you, you get past this little funk, this little give up period, as I like to call it, and you start writing again. So you've gone through the basic stages and now you're, you're later in life, you're post high school, post college maybe, maybe you've worked for the same company for 15 years and writing as a hobby but now you're starting to turn out works that are amazing they're really good everybody that reads them loves them they want more and more and more oh my god what happens next don't leave me on a cliffhanger like that you better go back and write now and come back and tell me what's going on 
you know how to write. You have the skill. But it still isn't good enough. And I'll tell you, my first novel, when I finished it, man, I was proud as shit of this novel. I was like, I'd done a couple screenplays. I'd done shit ton of poetry books. But this was an actual sit-down, full-length novel. And I couldn't have been more proud. And I'm still proud. It kicked off something that started amazing things for me. But by the time I was on my fourth novel, I decided to go back and get a refresh of where I started from. And so I went back to my first novel and I reread it. And oh my god, it was horrible. This was probably the shittiest story I've ever written in my life. I mean, it wasn't, but that's how it made me feel. By the time I was on my tenth novel, I go back to the fourth one. And oh my god, it was the most horrible thing I've ever written in my life. This is because we grow as writers. That first novel wasn't a horrible piece of shit. Neither was the fourth one. Neither was the tenth one. Neither will be the twentieth one. But in comparison to the skill level and the effort it takes, you will notice that whatever it is you're looking for, whatever it is that got you into this, your taste, that inner voice... It's more satisfied than before, but it's kind of like a drug. You know, you need more and more. It's got to be better and better. So by the time you're on your fourth or fifth novel, you have higher expectations than you did on your first one. And so when you go back and read that first one, your expectation levels are still sky high. But the writing back then wasn't as good. So you... you, You get frustrated with it. But how do we become a better writer? There's no secret to it, man. It's hard work and dedication. That's it. You want to know the honest answer? You want to be a better writer? Fucking write. Try different outlets. You know, if you're getting bored, if you're getting stagnant, if you don't know what to do next, try something new. Write poetry. Write short stories. Write screenplays. That's a whole different animal. Write a novel. Write song lyrics. Do something that's outside of what you normally do or what it is you want to do. And do that for a while. Get words out on paper. Just just keep writing, though. More. And then write more. And then write more. Write as much as you can, whatever you can, whenever you can. You can help this go faster if, if you're impatient or if you're lazy like I am. Instead of writing all the time, you should read all the time. If you're not writing, you're reading. And if you're serious about it, you probably always have a book on you at some point. I could stop you in the grocery store, but what are you reading? And you pull it out of your pocket. No. Some people actually carry around a physical book. I do. In this technological age that we are in, a lot of people have it on the e-readers, tablets, your cell phone. There's no excuse not to have a book with you anymore. I mean, there's just not, no. See you in the grocery store with the old lady. She goes over to get the carrots, pull it out and read a couple paragraphs. Reading and writing make you a better writer it's not a secret hard work and dedication 
read everything that you can that's inside your chosen genre. If you write horror, you better read horror. If you write suspense, read suspense. If you write true crime, read true crime. And here's the kicker. Read outside of your genre as well. Read those romance novels. Read those manga magazines. If it has words on it, man, read it. Experience new authors. People you've never heard of. Read that book that everybody hates. Because it's so shitty. Read it anyway. The more you read, the more you write the faster you're going to get to the point where that internal voice and your internal taste are satisfied. And I want I want you to remember something. I'm going to tell you this right here, right now. And I want you to remember it. Keep it in the back of your head. Write it down. Look at it every now and then. Whatever it takes. But just remember this. You are a good writer. Everyone can see it. Everyone but you. But you are a good writer. So you keep reading. You keep writing. And eventually, something inside you is going to click. And I'll give you an example. This goes back to high school. Math. Math was really, really hard for me up until about 10th grade. And my algebra teacher at the time, she was from California. We were in Texas, but she was from California. She was a surfer chick. She was young. She was cute. I had to crush. I sat in the front row. I really wanted to get to know math and the math teacher. But I just, I couldn't understand it. I didn't know what what the hell was going on. And one day she teaches, she's writing something on the board, some equation with an X in it. And she turns around, she says, okay, X is three. And my brain was like, well, then why didn't you just fucking write down three? Why did you have to put an X? So I raised my hand and I asked her, I said, why is X three? Why do, why, why? Why not just put a 3 there? Why did you put an X? Why is X 3? And she walks over to my desk and she puts both her hands on the desk and she leans forward and she looks right at me and she goes, It just is. That's, that's all I needed. Something in my brain, when she said that, something in my brain just clicked. And from then on, Math was simple because everything about the equations just is. Writing's the same way. Eventually, you're going to get to this point where everything is just going to click. Unfortunately, there's no hot math teacher that's going to lean forward over your desk and tell you that it just is and make it happen. Writing's a little bit different than math. You still have to put in the work. You still have to show up. But it's the volume that's going to make that light switch click on. So just keep reading. And keep writing. And if you do that, eventually, you're going to be satisfied with your own work. Hard work, dedication, write a lot, read even more, wait for the click, and then it'll be easy. I hope that that helps some of you out. Just remember, you are a good writer. You have this. Don't worry about what you wrote yesterday. Worry about what you're going to write today, what you're going to write tomorrow. Keep pushing forward. Always, always move forward. And until next week, guys, have fun 
and write words.